If you've been struggling to overcome addictive behavior for a long time, you are well aware of the relapse cycle where you basically go, I really need to quit this. I really want to quit this. I'm going to try really hard. And then sooner or later, you relapse again and you ask yourself, why did I do it again? I really want to quit. And you try again and you relapse again and so on and so forth. If this goes on for a long time, it's worth considering that maybe you don't actually want to quit. And when I say it's worth considering this, I'm not talking about capitulation. I'm not talking about like, well, okay, I'm going to give up. In fact, the purpose of what I'm talking about here is the exact opposite of this. Since holding on to the conviction that you want to quit and trying as hard as possible is clearly not working, maybe stop doing that and do something else to see if that works. So even though this seems counterintuitive, actually letting yourself consider, hold on, in what ways don't I want to quit? And what does that tell me about how to change my behavior could be the solution. Allowing yourself to consider that you don't actually want to quit might be the key to the breakthrough that you've been looking for. Welcome to the Quit by Healing podcast. As in most of our episodes, the topic here, the main thing we're looking at is porn addiction and what you can do to overcome this addiction and heal your brain from the negative effects of long-term porn use. However, everything I'm talking about here probably applies in very similar or even identical ways to other types of addictions and compulsive behaviors as well. And a quick note for those who are familiar with my content. One of the ways in which we can think about what it means when I say you don't actually want to quit is thinking about parts work or multiple selves. And we've talked about that in other contexts. So where you have your sober self who wants to quit and you have your addict self who's not at all interested in quitting. And when your addict self takes over, that's when you relapse. Now, that is a useful frame of reference and we can derive many really effective tools from that. And if you're interested in exploring that more deeply, this is something I share in my Discord community. So you can hit the first link in the description and there you can find access to my Discord community. And there I have a free course on shadow work that includes how to have a conversation with your addict self and start resolving the conflict between you and your addict self. So this can be super, super powerful, highly recommended. But today, I want to come at this from a slightly different perspective. Consider that your addictive behavior is a coping mechanism. You are using your addiction in order to somehow self-soothe or in order to distract yourself from some kind of emotional pain. You're doing it as a way to self-regulate. And if you're totally honest with yourself, if you think about how relapses happen, there's probably a moment there where all of the reasons you usually have for why you want to quit kind of fall away. And the actual experienced present moment truth is in that moment, you don't want to quit. In that moment, you do want to do your addictive behavior. And here's an interesting thought. It's actually reasonable and rational that you don't want to quit. So if addiction and addictive behavior is a coping mechanism, and also it feels good, Right, the thing you're doing feels good. So in the case of porn addiction, it feels great to watch porn and masturbate. It's very pleasurable, at least while you're doing it. And so let's put two and two together here. Okay, you're using this as a coping mechanism. There's unpleasant thoughts or feelings or emotions. There's stuff going on in your life that's stressing you out, that's painful, that you don't want to have to deal with. Plus, doing the thing is pleasurable and nice. So it's actually totally reasonable to want this. It's totally reasonable to say, yes, I want to feel good. And yes, I want relief from this emotional pain, relief from the stress and so on. It's a perfectly rational thing to do in that moment. And you can think of this as the addict self taking over and the addict self's rationality is, hey, this is what matters right here, right now matters. I want to feel better right now. And it's only the other self that goes, well, but you know, what about future consequences? Or you can just think of it as, you know, at different times of day, you have different priorities. And it's usually in the regret after relapsing that go, ah, but I don't want to do this. And what about the long-term consequences? And what about the negative effects it has on me? And here's why all of this is worth considering and why I'm framing it like this, right? If you assume that, hey, this is actually rational behavior, it's reasonable behavior, it is, it kind of makes sense to want this. It kind of makes sense to want to continue doing my addictive behavior and to not want to quit. It actually holds the key to something really important. First of all, you can stop fooling yourself because I see this a lot, people professing and 
basically being desperate to quit and saying, I want to quit. I'm trying my hardest. I've tried everything. But if you probe a little bit, when they say I've tried everything, they've really tried almost nothing other than just willpower. So in my moments of regret, I go, I'm never going to do this again. You know, I swear I'm never going to do this again. I'm going to try super hard to resist. And then, of course, willpower doesn't really last very long. It doesn't really get you anywhere. So the next time you're in a stressful situation, the next time you feel the urge, you relapse again. And really, so you haven't actually applied yourself. You haven't actually applied real strategies to try and cope with this addiction. And really, you're choosing to be in that cycle of... I'm telling myself and I'm telling the world that I want to quit. I want to be a better person, but I don't actually want to. And I relapse. I allow myself to relapse and I feel bad. And again, I profess that I want to quit. I allow myself to relapse and so on. I'm just choosing that cycle. So right now, this is my invitation. And I know this is difficult to consider yourself with this kind of clarity and drop the illusion. But this is my invitation for you to consider your own behavior and ask yourself, are you stuck in this kind of loop? Are you choosing to be stuck in the addiction and relapse loop because you don't actually really want to quit, because you're not actually really ready to let go yet. And if that's so, step one is to stop fooling yourself and admit to yourself, no, actually, I don't really want to quit. I would rather be in this struggle. I would rather be in this suffering, but not have to let go of my addiction. If that's the case, and you want to improve somehow, you want to somehow make progress. So the first step is to admit that this is what's going on and that you've been fooling yourself and you've been fooling other people that you've talked about your addiction to. That by itself can be really valuable to do. But there's more in considering that you don't actually want to quit. And that is to realize that, okay, you really have to want something else more than you want to stay addicted. So when that choice essentially comes up where it's like, okay, here's my my stress, my trigger has come up and I have the option to get relief from my addictive behavior. There's got to be something that you want more than that. The bad news is that for most people, the way this comes about is that the pain of continuing your addictive behavior becomes so great that you want relief from that pain, relief from the problems your addiction has caused for you. You want that more than the temporary relief that your addictive behavior brings you. So this is kind of the rock bottom story. And unfortunately, we're often just motivated by pain. So this is where you continue your addictive behavior until it becomes a real wrecking ball in your life and it does some really serious damage. Now, with porn addiction, there are many ways in which this can play out. It's not the same for everyone. Depending on your circumstances, there are different ways in which you can arrive at your own SHTF moment as your own moment where the shit hits the fan. And one of them, for example, is that you've been using porn for a long time and eventually you get together with a partner and now you would like to have sex with that partner in real life and you realize it doesn't work. You can't have good sex anymore. Maybe you can't get an erection anymore because you only get erect when you're watching porn on a screen. Or maybe you just find that you have real trouble connecting to another person and having actual sex. And what you end up doing is just like lying back and closing your eyes and fantasizing about porn. And you don't actually enjoy real life sex. And you might realize it's like, oh crap, all I actually wanted was to have an enjoyable sex life. And I've used porn so much as my substitute for an enjoyable sex life that now I'm no longer able to have actual sex. And that becomes such a painful thing that now you're motivated to quit porn because you go, okay, yes, masturbating to porn feels good. But what I want even more is to have the ability to enjoy real sex. And honestly, if that's what happens to you, that's actually one of the better outcomes. There are other shit hits the fan moments that are much, much worse. So your porn use might escalate, which is one of the things that happens with addictions. You escalate to more frequent use and to more extreme stimulus. You might escalate your way to a taste in porn that is borderline illegal and amoral, or maybe even full on illegal. Or your porn addiction has become a sex addiction and now you're visiting prostitutes and maybe you live in a country or in a state where prostitution isn't legal. So again, you're engaging in illegal activity for your addiction and you're in a situation where if anyone caught you, you could literally, it could ruin your life. You could lose your career, you'd have to do jail time, all kinds of horrendous stuff would happen. And so you've escalated to a point where this can destroy your life. And then again, 
hopefully this doesn't happen, but the pain of that becomes so great that there's freedom from that becomes the thing you want more than relief from using porn. And like I said, there's many other paths you can go down depending on how this develops. But wouldn't it be nice if we don't have to get to this shit hits the fan moment, if we don't have to wait until the addiction causes this amount of damage to our personal lives and our well-being before we're motivated to quit. And this brings me to a really valuable tool and insight you can apply for overcoming porn addiction. Because you can get to something, you can arrive at something you want more than to continue being addicted through insight and awareness. To explain what I mean here, let me give you an example from my own experience. Because again, I think this is probably different for everyone. And you really can only discover this for yourself. But let me just tell you what I discovered. So when I was using porn excessively, at one point I started examining this and trying to bring more awareness to my behavior and asking myself, what is it exactly that I want? What am I seeking? And I noticed that when I was using porn, I was displaying hungry ghost behavior, which is to say, I was never satisfied. I was always seeking and seeking and seeking. And I was like frantically seeking. And most of the time I was not finding what I was looking for. It seemed like only every once in a while I would like get a glimpse of what I really wanted. Every once in a while, I'd be, I'd be opening so many different clips. I'd, I'd have so many tabs open. I'd be searching and searching and searching. And every once in a while, something in a video that I was watching would give me a brief glimpse of satisfaction that immediately disappeared again. And then I'd be searching and searching and searching again. That's what I mean by hungry ghost behavior. I was never satisfied. I was never finished. Using porn felt like scratching an itch that gets itchier the more you scratch it. So it's like it gives me relief, but also kind of makes me want even more relief. And ultimately, it never leads to the satisfaction I'm actually looking for. So then I tried to examine that more deeply. And I did this a lot through introspective writing, writing about what's going on here. What am I looking for? What are the things I respond to? This helped me uncover some of the deeper desires that I was trying to satisfy through my porn use. For example, I noticed that I have this deep wish to feel desired. And I have a deep wish to feel like I can express my desire in a way that is completely safe. Now, there's a good chance, especially if you're a man, there's a good chance you can relate to this. Because first of all, as men, we can go through life and for years at a time, nobody expresses desire towards us. For a man, it's a relatively rare occurrence to feel desire. It's a bit different for women, right? For women, it's often like the opposite. They get too much of it. But for men, it can be very, very rare that someone actually expresses desire for you. And that was certainly the case for a lot of my life as well. But then there's the other side as well. I want to express my desire and I want to feel safe. I want to feel sure that my expression of desire is welcome. And this again has become difficult. It's something I think many men struggle with because we live in an environment where if you're a man, for sure, you have been shamed for expressing your desire. And directly or indirectly, you've been taught that probably it's safest to just not do it, right? Just don't, you see an attractive woman somewhere, don't approach her, don't try to flirt with her, don't ask for her number. This is, is probably some kind of violation, right? You probably shouldn't do it. And who knows, maybe someone's gonna record you, share you on social media, and now you've gone viral as the creepy guy that everybody makes fun of or something. So it's, it's better to play it safe and just, just don't do that. And even in the context of a relationship, it can feel unsafe to express your desire. In my case, something I really struggled with is I was a couple of times in a relationship where my genuine expression of desire was somehow seen as threatening. And it was like interpreted as, oh, if you have this much desire for me, does that mean you only want me for sex? And if you want sex with me, does that mean you don't love me? Almost like it's one or the other, which again is kind of a toxic belief that must have been installed culturally. I don't blame my partners who did this for this. But the result of all this is that I didn't feel like my desire was welcome. I never felt like it's safe to express desire. And these are just two examples. I, I found some other things, but these are two examples related to desire, which that's what I was really looking for. And this is why I was never really satisfied with porn. Because yes, sometimes I'd see a clip where, you know, maybe the actress does something that, that kind of gives me that glimpse of, it makes me feel, it like fools me into thinking I'm being desired right now. And like for a moment, I can believe it, but then I realize, no, I'm just watching a video. It's not the real thing. And then I keep looking. And also in porn, there's like certain things that would give me that feeling like, oh yes, this is safe. Here, expressing desire is safe. But again, it's just an illusion. It's not 
real. And the fact that it's not real keeps me searching for more and more. Here's how all of this relates back to where we started. I realized that this is what I really want. And I also realized the more aware I became of this, the more I realized how much porn cannot give me the thing I really want. Because what porn can give me is it can give me visual stimulation. It can give me naked people doing things with each other and to each other. And that can be exciting, but that's not what I really want. And it's not what you really want either, because if it were, you would probably stick with the first thing you open, right? If all you wanted is the visual stimulation of watching some people have sex, you'd open one clip and watch it and that's it. It's already giving you all that porn has to offer. And awareness really is everything here, because the more aware I am of what I really want, what desires I'm really trying to fulfill, the more clear it becomes to me that porn is not giving me what I really want. And if anything, porn is making it less likely that I get the thing I really want. And what all this leads to is that I can quit porn because I get to a point where I actually want something else more than I want this shallow relief of porn. If anything, it reminds me of the thing I really want. And it reminds me like, oh, what I really want is to give and receive desire in a safe container, in a safe way. And the only way I can actually get this experience is in real life. Like I have to somehow meet someone with whom I can make this happen. When that becomes clear enough, I become more motivated to go pursue that, to, even though it's obviously difficult, it's more difficult than opening a porn site, but because I know what I really want and because I know that I can't get it from porn, I'm actually much more motivated to do whatever it takes to you know, develop myself, develop my skills, go meet people, to somehow make this happen in the real world. And like I said, this is just my example. I could also go into more examples of what I uncovered with this, but the theme is always the same. There is something that I'm seeking in porn, but I'm not actually getting. That there's, there's the desire underneath the desire. And the more aware I got about what's actually happening when I'm using porn and what I really want, the easier it was for me to no longer desire porn. I've talked about this many times before. The goal of quitting porn, and the reason it's called quit by healing, is to, to actually heal this thing, to not be someone who successfully constantly resists porn, but to be someone who no longer wants to use porn. And for me, everything I explained here was part of that solution. So with that, I encourage you to try this out for yourself and ask yourself, number one, is it possible that the reason you haven't quit your addiction yet is because you actually don't want to quit? And number two, what can you do to examine your behavior and uncover something that you want more than you want to continue being an addict? If you have questions about this, I would love to get into a discussion. You can ask questions in my Discord community. Again, that's the first link in the description. There you can also join the Quit by Healing program, which is my 21-day program for quitting porn and healing your brain from the effects of porn. And you can also click the link in the description where you can leave a voice message. So there's a podcast page with a message button. You can leave a voice message if you want me to reply in a future episode. It's completely anonymized. You can drop your messages there and I will respond to them in future episodes. If you appreciate the content I create, please leave a review wherever you're listening to this. Leave a like on YouTube, leave a comment, do some engagement for the algorithm type stuff. It really helps getting the word out. And with that, thank you and until next time.